Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Ah, <sighs> Mylan. The warm overcoat keeping neuronal signals firing back and forth effortlessly and efficiently. Sort of like the blubber coating on cetaceans. It keeps them insulated and helps them float. And travel farther? Yes, myelin and whale blubber are practically the same thing. Kinda. Over the next two sketches, we're going to cover a few syndromes that result in demyelination of axons. This leads to impaired conduction of nerve signals. Why, you say? Well, the measure of the signal transduction efficiency of a neuron is known as the length constant. Length constant refers to how far along an axon a nerve impulse can travel before its signal dissipates. Without myelin to insulate axons, electrical impulses kind of stick to the sides of the neuron, attracted to the charges in the extracellular environment, instead of just heading down the neuron as planned. This means that the signal dissipates too soon, a decrease in length constant, in other words. In this sketch, we're going to be tearing off those myelin sheaths and decreasing that length constant in the central nervous system. First up, the most common demyelinating disease out there, multiple sclerosis. The time? June 4th, 1940. Winston Churchill is about to give his famous We Shall Fight on the Beaches speech. The place, the British House of Commons. The man in that time-traveling police box? People call him the master. And you can usually find him solving mysteries and averting catastrophes throughout space and time. Master who, you ask? <laughs> well, aren't you in for a treat? Right then, I have questions. But number one is this. What in the name of sanity has he got on his head? It's myelin. I wear myelin now. Myelin is cool. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is the most common and most recognizable demyelinating disorder of the central nervous system. Let that myelinated fez falling off the master's head represent demyelination in the CNS specifically. Notice too how the dongle thingy has little myelin sheaths along its length. Although the master has always wanted to meet Winston Churchill, he's here for a different reason. The master's arch enemies, the oligos, have created their own wormhole. Traveling to World War II era Great Britain in an attempt to change the course of history. Demyelinate! Demyelinate! Notice how the olig head looks suspiciously like an oligodendrocyte, the glial cell responsible for forming myelin sheaths around surrounding axons in the CNS. That dome with two eye-like projections is reminiscent of a central oligodendrocyte cell reaching out and grabbing onto surrounding axons, wrapping them in myelin. MS is an immune-mediated inflammatory disease that leads to the destruction of oligodendrocytes and, therefore, demyelination of axons within the CNS. And wherever the master travels, his companion is never far behind. As with many other autoimmune diseases, MS most commonly affects women. Typically, the disease presents in early adulthood, most commonly affecting women in their 20s and 30s. Genetic factors may play a role as well, with certain HLA-DR genes tied to increased susceptibility to MS. In fact, having a first-degree relative with MS raises your chance over 15-fold right off the bat. Notably, environmental factors appear to play an outsized role in determining the risk for MS. Like other autoimmune diseases, the concept of viral infection, such as EBV or VZB, triggering the immune system to go haywire and kick off the development of MS is a common theory. Interestingly, the prevalence of MS increases as you move farther away from the equator. With areas such as the northern U.S., Canada, and Europe having a rate of MS 30 to 50 times higher than that of equatorial countries. Hence why we've got Great Britain highlighted on the police box map. 